What's going on guys, it's John of Team Gradelock here to bring you another deck profile and this time, uh, thanks to the Zoo Booster that came out, um, we're going to bring a deck profile of Mega Colony, uh, specifically Gridora because, you know, uh, it's kind of the best Mega Colony deck right now and uh, I, I really like Mega Colony, I, I was playing the deck for a while, uh, everybody's going to say that, but like, even before, when all we had was Old Dark Face and like, uh, the only good stride was Opteranus, and at that point he wasn't even considered good. Uh, I really liked the deck, and I was playing it. Um, and now, thanks to this uh, good boost that they got from the set, the deck has become like extremely better, a lot better, uh, to play in the current format. And I'm I'm happy to say that I'm able to play a deck like Mega Colony in in today's format, a point where it could actually compete and be relevant. So yeah, we're gonna get into the profile and. Uh, just share my thoughts about the deck and my choices. You can already see from the starter that I'm not running the Garafa engine, and that's mainly because, uh, to be honest, I think the cards in this deck are a little bit too important to cut for Garafa, but we're going to get into that. Uh, the starter is the Outstanding Mutant. I don't know the third part because, <laughs> let's be honest, uh, its effect uh, is really good for the deck. It's a free shove in the soul and it just allows every single dark device skill to activate and also con considering that this is a beginning of ride phase skill uh, you're able to potentially fetch whatever ride target that you may be missing if you're missing a one I, 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 I'm crying for you because then he's stuck on the vanguard and you're not able to work but you can fetch for twos and threes which is kinda what you need to get to in order to actually play the game and uh, and work uh, Overall, it's a it's a fantastic starter. It doesn't it puts in a lot of work and, uh, to be real, I I wouldn't want any other like Crime Bug's okay, but the utility of pre GB uh rest everything and draw a card, allowing Dark Device skills to work and just fetching pieces and building souls too much to not want with a starter like this, especially in a deck like this. Uh, I guess we'll just talk about why you need soul and then the best card in the deck. Uh by far is Gridora. Uh, Gridora uh, is kind of what Mega Colony needed in order to come back and be relevant again. Uh, her effect is on ride, uh, once per turn, on ride or on stride. Sadly can't do both. Uh, Chaos Breaker is better than this sadly, but anyway, Counterblast 1 on ride or on stride. You stun a column completely, they can't call to it. So that makes things uh, very good for the deck considering that you force your opponent into position where they uh, can be denied access of their plays, uh, depending on what deck there are. And in some cases, you may stun a column with units already in it, and then completely paralyze the column in order to force your opponent to call more cards, so overwhelm becomes even scarier. And to top it off, uh, Gridora's uh, best uh, part about her is that she's a Soul Blast 1 at the beginning of the turn, your opponent, you counter charge and your opponent counter blasts, so you get to screw over with an opponent's valuable resource. Depending on what deck your opponent's playing, that counter blast can mean a, a lot to them. And once we get into the strides, you'll see that uh, if your opponent decides to be counter blast ha happy, then we are going to get rewarded for it. And it's just good to have a card like Rodora that's able to stabilize our game and mess up our opponent's game at the same time. It doesn't provide you with any physical advantage, like any uh, any raw advantage, like plus one advantage, but it really screws over your opponent in terms of advantage. And that's uh, that's all that Mega has always been known for, uh, indirectly plusing, and Gridor is the best at that. Now, shoutouts to old Darkface, but sorry, we gotta run your new guy. Um, we run the Intimidating Mutant King, uh, Darkface LCDs. Uh, He's pretty good, not gonna lie. Um, not good as a vanguard, but as a rearguard, he's really powerful. He has the ability to stun out a whole column. He doesn't even target the column that he's deciding to stun. He just flat out rests and stuns everything in the column for a counter blast and a soul blast. Um, once he's placed on rearguard, if he's placed on vanguard, you kind of cry, but uh, you still use it. Uh, you just don't want to. And then GB2 dark device on the vanguard rearguard, he's a 10k swinger that can't be intercepted. Um, so overall, it's a fantastic beater. Uh, I probably would be playing for if I didn't think the other grade twos are uh, valuable and important in the deck. Uh, I overall just think that uh, you're screwing your chances a little bit. 
uh, in the G-Assist parts if you see this on the G-Assist instead of Ghidorah. Um, it could be argued that you would play uh, four of this card to make it eight grade threes. I've just found too much value in my grade twos in order to bump this up. I may bump it up because I'm still testing, uh, oh, but from testing I've been seeing that three is enough. I, I ride it at three sometimes even. Uh, I keep seeing this at, at three even, so but let's not talk about that anymore. Overall good beat stick and uh, kind of a, it's, it's a really solid beater, I can't complain about that. But I'd rather prefer this guy's beater. Um, White Horn Mutant, Dangerous Horn, okay. Talk about Dragon twice, he has Horn twice. Uh, his effect is the standard 10k clones that archetypes of stride breaks are starting to get. You know, if you don't reveal Dark Face, which is the 7 grade 3s that we run, he gets minus 5k for the turn. Um, rare occasions, you may do that, just to deny your opponent of Counter Blast, but that's besides the point. His other effect is that GB1, oh I'm sorry, not, not GB1, just if you have a grade 4 Vanguard with Dark Face, it's technically G, uh, Generation Break. Um, if your opponent has one less stood rear guard, it gets 6k. So, you know, free 16k beat stick is nothing to laugh at, especially in Mega Colony where you just want your rear guards to be uh, outstanding beaters now. Uh, we got very good options, and these 10k base, uh, these 10k base uh, uh, grade 2s that they started to give us with actual effects is really, really busted. It's not as good as Glow Heater, but, you know, free 16k, you're not going to knock that, especially in Mega Colony. Talking about free 16k, by the way, we play for Bulg Wasp. Uh, I used to, not gonna lie, I used to knock this card. I, I was talking bad about it uh, a while. I was running Punish Tag, and I was saying Punish Tag was better than this card for a while. The only reason that I'm running it is because I've come across a lot of people that have decided to keep uh, Rear Guard standing, especially behind their Vanguard. So his addition, besides the fact that he's a... Uh, gigantic beat stick. He allows me to rest my opponent's board in order to make sure uh, that my uh, not not only my dark device skills are going off, but I'm drawing as much cards as I want to with overwhelm. As much card as they played, that's what I'm getting. Uh, but on top of that, he's just a free 16k beater for the turn that he's placed. And again, if we learn anything from Dangerous Horn uh, and in this deck in general, the 16k beaters are essential and really good. Now here's the contrary. People are gonna hate me. People are gonna. Uh, people are going to sign up the video directly. But guys, let me explain because people have the same talk about Muleptin. This card is utterly stupid. Its effect um, is that a uh, non-G break. That's the, that's the most stupidest part to me. Is that uh, if it's in the front row, everything in the same column as it on your opponent's side can't stand during the next stand phase. Like it's ridiculous that. This card is non-generation break, um, and also uh, on the rear guard it's a free uh, stride if you want to sack it, uh, if you're going into a dark device stride, which there is only one in the G zone, but we'll get into that later. Um, and also, like this thing just covers so many matchups that you would want it in, and some matchups it's like so good to have a free column stun uh, for no commitment, no cost, and then your opponent has to deal with this issue if it's on the board. I've had people straight up attack this thing with their vanguard. And I'm, and I'm just like, cool. It doesn't really matter to me. I'm, I got the value that I wanted out of this card. And sometimes against Link Choker, it's like, cool, you, you're going to lock this. No matter what, this thing is stunning your column. And by my end phase, if you leave this thing unlocked in the front row, it's going to stun your column again. There's so much value that comes out of this card. It's completely insane. And I understand 7k base is terrible, but I took this risk with Leptin. And I really, really don't care. Because this this effect is so strong that I really can't see myself not running this thing. Maybe four is a little bit too much, but like three, three is a uh, three is really good. And I, I again, I've been finding a lot of value in four. I, I urge people to try this card. Um, it's it's really busted. Then we move on to grade ones. We run the four of the new perfect guards. Uh, been times contemplating where I want. The old unflipping PG's back. But this thing is super valuable, like it's not even funny. Uh, you bind another copy of it in the drop zone, you get a free draw, and you can counter charge or soul charge. It's utterly broken, it's utterly stupid that you get a draw after using a PG. Uh, and it also counter charges for you. 
or soul charges. You may need the soul for Ghidorah, so you may uh, make the choice as you want to. It's just, it's up to you, but to be real, um, uh, it's a really good resource to have, especially since it's an act, you can just use it whenever you want. It just gives you free resources back for perfect guarding and an attack, which is really good in this game. Uh, can't complain about that there. Then, moving on to Dorcas, uh, we play four of the old art because old art is best. Uh, there's not much to say about him. You know, pitch for stride, stride deck, uh, get the right grade three, all that jazz. Really good. Then we run uh, three Vulcan Lefrydi. Uh, give me one second. Yep, three Vulcan Lefrydi. Uh, this card is also very good in the meta considering it has resist. It's a problematic rear guard that your opponent must deal with, and if they are a deck that can't deal with it, then they're never going to be able to intercept. And it also gives you free counter charge back for your skills if you want to be using, you know, your counter boss skills a lot. Overall, this card is just really good uh, for the deck, and uh, no matter what, I, I, I don't think I've ever played Dark Face deck without this card. This card is just utterly busted. It has resist without saying resist, and it also just stops your opponent from intercepting. Leaving dead units on the board, which is really good with Gordora. Uh, four, uh, I'm sorry, four. Three bad luck star. Uh, Non-generation breaks, soul blast one to draw a card if your opponent has three rested units. Uh, 6k base is irrelevant. This thing is really good as a regard just to play in the early stages. Um, and the fact that it's non-generation break, uh, it's a solid one, it's a solid uh, plus one that you're just gaining advantage off of in the early game. Especially if your opponent's trying to rush you because people think that's the way to beat this deck. Which I can somewhat agree with, but that's what Vulgar Blister and the Bad Luck Star are for. Four of the person the the per the per the personal crit, that's what I call these things. Shoving the soul plus five K draw. Uh good in early game, put it in front of your starter and swing. Uh and then get out of the way in these problematic matchups now, like Kyro and Link Joker. And freaking soul for Gador is always good. Um, for Machining Tree Hopper, finally happy that Mega's got some form of a Paradigm Shift clone, uh, and this is one of the best ones that I've seen for this clan because it literally just straight goes back and stuns a rear guard, and with Overwhelm you're just drawing cards, and it gives, you may just draw it back, but you, it doesn't matter to you, like, let's be real, you're drawing three cards and then you're sending one back. Just to stun a rear guard and put and be able to hit more triggers on your opponent, it's busted. Uh, away from twelve crit, we're playing four makeup widow, because we have sixteen k attacking rear guards and we we have dark face Alcides, so our rear guards get huge. Overall, makes our rear guards get huge. The GB makes our rear guards get huge. So we want a card like this, and also its effect just to dark device going into soul, uh, stun a grade one in the back row. Uh, or is it just it's stun a grade one, uh, it's stun a grade one, and you uh, counter charge a soul charge is really beneficial for you, especially in chaos matchup. This is Vulcan, and this card is what I usually call back off of the um uh, the glob, and if they leave it on the board, um because if people are getting turn player priority completely wrong with uh how makeup widow interacts with lock and uh, crisis. They have the priority. Uh, I, I'll, I would get into that in the comments if you guys want to talk about it. But if they don't decide to deal with it, then I'm going to get a free counter charge and a soul charge. Um, it's just really good on that front. Then, for Machining Snowwake, love these uh, series of heal triggers. They're just really good for this uh, for this game, especially for um, uh, especially for dark. Uh, especially for Ghidorah, because you may get you may want a soul charge at some points, because you would be counter charging off that soul charge anyway. All right, uh, G zone. We're gonna go through the G guards first because they're uh, somewhat less important. We run one Scabrigus, five uh, k G guard. If your opponent has two rested units, this is gonna include the Vanguard. Uh, more often times, it's not. Let's be real. This doesn't go off because your opponent. Uh, Usually attacks with their Vanguard first without a booster against this deck because they want to feed Overwhelm. So he's just in here in case things are going a little bit wrong. Maybe the first G-Guard usage of the game. Uh, if your opponent is trying to rush at you uh, with their board uh, and you don't want to waste one of your 10k G-Guardians yet, 
Uh, I may get switched out, but I still like the uh, the the 20k. It's it's really free. <laughs> One of the unflipping G guard. Uh, people get this thing wrong too. Uh, unfortunately, this thing can only guard the Vanguard, and uh, its effect is to you know GP1 flip over G guard. Uh, your opponent uh, rests two of their units if they don't want to or they can't. Uh, you draw a card, counter charge, and soul charge. So it feeds, ev it feeds everything that this deck wants to do uh, because it essentially gives you two counter blasts back because that soul that she gives uh, is going to be used immediately up with Ghidorah. And getting faster to GD8 is also very good, so there's no reason not to play this card. Uh, I drop. Uh, we run one of our... Uh, knock off to Nile Griffin. Uh, it's Jifrost. Basically, its effect is that you counter blast one when your opponent's Vanguard attacks, and you rest all the uh, back row units. And for each rested unit, uh, this card gets a plus 5k shield. Mainly good against uh, decks that use their Amber clones and they require the usage of their Amber clones. Uh, I'm looking at you, Green Nature, because Crayon Tiger is ridiculous. Um, sorry, Henry. But, uh,. Besides them, yeah, Cool Hank, uh, just other decks, and sometimes it's just good to rest the back row of problematic units. Maybe you want to guard Laurel, <laughs> whoever knows. I know there's a lot of cards that this thing screws over, maybe even uh, the Omega Lockers and Link Choker. Um, but overall, it's just, it's disruption and can sometimes be a free, a free 10k or 15k G Guardian. But our best G Guardian is definitely the new one, who's only a rare too. It's a... Uh, Morphosin. Uh if your opponent has one less stood unit, uh I'm pretty sure that's right. Uh, sorry, no, if the number of your stood rear guards is two or less, if your opponent's stood rear guard is two or less, which is even easier to achieve because of Gordora gets ten K shield. Uh overall that's insane shield value. That should not be knocked and that's uh that's uh, that's what every control deck needs in my mind. A good a good G Guardian like this, free ten K shields is amazing. Alright, next we move on to the smaller things. Sea Breeze. Uh I would well I'm not gonna explain Sea Breeze because everybody knows what Sea Breeze does, but I have been contemplating cutting this because the only value that comes out of this is if I have three counter blasts using on a good door turn. Other than that it's kind of meh. I, I like I really don't like this card too much, but I guess I have to keep it in if people grade to stall me. Uh it's it is what it is. Uh one uh, Poison Mutant DD Parasphere. This is only for the situations where my opponent's uh, damage denying me, uh, and they only give me one counter blast. If they if they are putting me in the mindset of using either Ghidorah or Overwhelm, and I I still want to draw and I still want to use Ghidorah, so I use this card. I haven't tested this thing too much because in my mind I'm 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 thinking that I put this in on that mindset because it was happening a lot in testing, but. In my mind, I think if I'm being damaged tonight, I'm not even going to have the two rear guards uh, to begin with in order to even use this card. So, eh, it's it's not... I don't know if it's a necessity yet, but I can definitely see the instances where I just want to free draw. And I just want a free effect, mind you, because everything else in this G-Zone requires a counter boss to work with if it's not, like, late stages. So, yeah. Next... Uh, yeah, now the 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 mean and greedy. Uh, people are gonna think I'm stupid for this too, and I'm not saying it's a necessity. I've just been saying I've been testing it a lot. I've been seeing value in these. Uh, four overwhelm. Uh, you know the the cards is really good. It gives you advantage for every rigor your opponent has, and if they're playing around it, which I love. If your opponent's playing around what Mega Colony does, then you just draw. You get a free quad drive and a crit, especially on the first drive. Like that's just utterly powerful. And your opponent just has to straight up deal with that um, and pl uh, decide which situation they would want. Either commit to board and let me draw draw, draw a bunch of cards or not and hit free quit, get get hit with a free crit. Um, and four drive checks, like, it's, it's ridiculous. And it's GB3, which is, you know, the dark device, uh, if nothing stood in the same column. 2k to everybody for each face down damage your opponent has. So at max, 10k to everybody. Uh, it's insanely strong. Like, no joke. Like, free uh, power boost to everybody, including herself, is utterly ridiculous and utterly strong. 
Um, people play 3, and I understand why people play 3. The only reason I'm playing 4 is because I've been playing a lot of control recently, and I feel that the control matchup is the most important uh, matchup in this game because it's comprised of this deck, um, Ka uh, Kagero, Link Joker, and I've been playing Vanquisher a lot. So I've been needing 4 Overwhelm in all these games because of how grindy those matchups get. And I need the draw power against them and the stabilization that this card provides in order to, uh, like, keep up with them. It's just that simple. And, like, the card puts in way too much work in order to not be played at at least three. But I've been finding a lot of value in four. That's the, uh, that's the, the gist of why I'm running four this card. Also just use it for free. Like in the late sorry, in the late stages I also just use it for free power boost and uh push power at my opponent. Like legit it's like all it's good all around. Then three Opterandus. Now I will admit I was a stickler for why am I even playing three in the first place. Um this card is run at three for the sole purpose that there are some matchups where you straight up cannot deal with what your opponent does, so you just have to completely lock out what your um you know the the skills that your opponent has uh i won matchups with this because i denied my opponent the ability to return back their crits there was one matchup in testing where i was playing against chaos and he was at two cards left in his deck so i strode this thing i ref i did not let him call so he could not return his crits back to deck you know he drew the card he had one card left in his deck he could legit do nothing so he just lost that's the power of this card. Um, also use it against machinings because I never wanted them to have a board. And the other main thing is also in tandem with uh, with Gridora. Because, uh, you know, I need to get exact confirmation. But by reading the cards, and I, I know that may be hard sometimes, but by reading the cards, Gridora says that your opponent cannot call in the same column uh, during their turn. And... Albertrandus says they cannot superior call or call until the end of their turn. So this, uh, from the understanding of reading, is supposed to last that same turn. So against matchups like Grey Nature or Neo Nectar or even Grand Blue, your opponent cannot call units with their G guards, which is the important thing. You do not want your opponent uh, to be able to uh, get around Gridora and then multi attack you in your face after you know, using after getting around Gridora. So you want to be able to use this to knock out those problematic matchups like Grand Blue, Pale Moon, uh, Great Nature, you know, all of that. Uh, so yeah, that's why that he's very important. And I, again, I was a stickler. I thought I would need three and I needed three in many games. I don't think it's, I, I don't think it's the best card in the G zone, but that's up for debate. I think this thing kills you if you decide to be stupid and just spam the hell out of it. That's just me though. 1 GB8, uh, was running 2 at one point, um, cut it out for the Parasphere, um, and it would be what I, uh, it would be the extra one that I'd be running if I had, if I didn't want to run for Overwhelm, but this card is just, uh, it's still utterly just very strong. Its effect is that all of your rear guard, at GB8, all your rear guards get plus 5 for each one of your opponent's rested units, which is including the Vanguard, so let's just say in... For example, if your opponent has uh, their full board, then each and every single rear guard gets plus 30k, so it's plus 60k to the column, oh, including himself, and he denies your opponent intercepting, and he stops the auto abilities of every single card on the vanguard and the rear guard circle. So what exactly does this mean? Well, besides um, Kagero, um, uh, Kagero's the Nile Griffin, which is why we run the Vulcan, uh, this stops... Every single defensive play besides that in the game. It stops uh, Time Leap's uh, thing with the gear cap where they give their Vanguard 10k because that's a rare guard's auto skill. It stops Angel Feather's defensive skill because that's a Vanguard auto skill along with Broken Heart. And it stops Night Roche and Anakin's because that's a Vanguard auto skill. Just completely shuts it off for the turn and gives you free range to just go face at your opponent. Um, so this deck... I would say this deck loses to the Nalgryphon, but that's why we play the Vulcan in order to hit huge numbers and not be able to be um, denied. Like, overall, this deck just has very 
uh, good ways to play around everything, and that's what the G-Zone and the uh, the main deck provides. Overall, just different options to deal with everything that your opponent's going to be able to do, which is the half of the other reason why I don't want to play the Garafa engine. I just think everything's so important. Again, but besides that, one Zoa. Um, haven't used it uh, to win yet. Um, it would have been overkill if I did. That's the main reason why I haven't used it yet. Uh, but I know there's going to be situations I've already talked to people and I've told people that I know there's going to be matchups where they're going to call down their hand, they're going to drive check three, and I know there's no PG, or I'm just counting and I know there's no PG left and I just want a secure game because when you call a card and you make it turn into a Nazi, like shouting nine five times, it's just, it's utterly great. Like, there, there's no, <laughs> you can G-guard it, but unless you got four G-guards, there's no way you're blocking that rear guard. And at that point, you're not going to be able to guard the Vanguard. So, yeah. Zoa's, Zoa's good. He's not the best uh, ZR. In my mind, he's actually the worst. But, you know, you still run him because he still can close out games if your opponent has been in a bad position. But overall, that's it, guys. I want to thank you guys for, again, watching and tuning in for the content. Uh, please leave comments in the, in the comment section down below of what you thought about this deck. Um, what other improvements that you could think about this deck? I would just like to discuss it with you guys. Um, subscribe if you enjoyed our content. And if you liked our, uh, the video, then like the video. It would be great, greatly appreciated. And if you want to hit the notification bell to be notified whenever we post a video, that would also be greatly appreciated. Overall, thank you guys for watching. Uh, and hope you have a good day and a better tomorrow.